it has been just over four weeks since we put these seeds into these tiny little cells. And look at them, they're doing beautifully, they're go growing fantastic. I think we need to go over today what we do now. You've, you've germinated all these seeds, good job. And now what the heck are you gonna do with them? They need a little extra care still. They're not quite ready to go into the garden. It's early April and it's still just a little too cold out there for some of these. And our weather is unpredictable right now. So I don't know if we're gonna get really low 40s or in the 60s. You just can never tell in April in California. So let's go over what the heck do you do with these? How do you get them out and not kill them? Where do you put them once you've got them out? And how are we gonna take care of them? What are we gonna feed them? When do they need fertilizer? Am I gonna put them in the sun or the shade? Lots of questions to answer. Hi you guys, I'm Sonia with Suburban Gardening and we are going to go over every detail on how you take care of these little babies. This has 72 cells in it and my germination rate was not 100%, but I expect that because oftentimes I'll use seeds that I've had for several years and they don't always germinate, but I like to try them out anyways. But let's start over here on the right and let me show you. Right here we have some thyme and it's very full, very full, lots of little plants down in there. Thyme seeds are tiny, they're hard to keep track of. Here we've got some basil and I love basil. My husband makes great pesto, so we're going to grow a lot of that in the garden. This one are some petunias. Now, growing petunias, those little seeds are tiny, and I order these petunia seeds from the Swallowtail Seed Company, and they're a special color, and I absolutely love them. So this one, oops, I didn't write the color, but they're yellow. I know they're yellow. Now, these are calendulas. Can you see how much bigger they are than all the rest of them? They're hardy, hardy, hardy. And I'm going to put them in a little bit bigger of a cell because they need some space. Now these I'm super excited about. These are narrow leaf milkweed. And these are the plants that attract monarch butterflies. It's the only plant that the monarch butterfly will lay its eggs on, the caterpillars will eat, and then make a butterfly. So we're going to be making a butterfly garden coming up pretty soon. This is gonna be a big part of that. Now on this side, I have echinacea. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but this little thing right here, that's not echinacea. I think that's a weed. That must have come in my, wheat, in my seed packet. I'm not absolutely sure, but maybe it did. Anyway, these echinaceas are absolutely adorable. And I'm going to take the big ones out, not the small ones, just the big ones out. And I'm gonna put them into what I'll show you, a bigger cell. And over here we have alyssum. I'm telling you, alyssum is one of the easiest things to grow. I actually grow it out on my hill. My husband and I just broadcast seeds and it comes up all over the place. But I love alyssum. It just softens the garden and just brings in so much color. It looks kind of like a carpet. Absolutely gorgeous. So let me get in there, show you how I get them out, and then we'll put them in different pots. One thing that I do when I'm transplanting my seedlings is I've already filled my little um, four pack here with very good potting soil, indoor potting soil. This doesn't have any bacteria in it that's gonna hurt the plants. So that is one very important thing. When we start taking these little seedlings out of where they're very happy, exposing them to the air, those little roots could dry out really fast. So we want to get them in here as quick as possible. I'm going to be using just six packs that I've sort of saved from plants that I've bought in over time. And I also have some four packs. The thing I like about these four packs is that they're tall. So like the calendula will do much better in this longer four pack. If you only have the six pack, that's quite all right. And if you only have solo cuts, that's quite all right. Whatever you have to put them in, as long as you put in good soil, then they're gonna do great. I think this is the part that always scares everybody, but this is so rewarding for me. Now I have a knife, just an old butter knife that I got out of the kitchen a long time ago. And I know this is a little overkill, but this is what I'm going to be using to poke my holes. It just is an absolutely perfect diameter. That's why I use it. So let's go ahead and do 
some of the um, narrow leaf first because they're really small. I'm just going to put my knife down in there and, and then I hold it up like this. So can you, oh, look at those are so beautiful. Now see, we lost some of those roots, aren't it? So these roots are looking absolutely gorgeous and with absolutely minimal amount of fussing, I am going to pull these guys apart. Give them a little wiggle. They got a little tangled up. The more roots you can hold onto, the better. And I have quite a few roots here. Take my knife or take my little poker thing. And then when I put it down in the ground, into the soil, it already has a perfect little home for it to go into. Now, doesn't that just look perfect? I will tell you one thing about transplants. If you, if you did something and they didn't like it, they will tell you right away. They will quickly. So just to go over, we are in the shade. It's not a hot day today. I think it's about 75, but those guys look absolutely perfect in there. I am going to go through and I'm going to do a whole bunch of them and walk you guys through it a couple of times. So this one has three. Well, let's do this one. He's a big guy. Remember, I put my knife down straight and then I turned it this way because I'm trying to, and I put it all the way to the bottom. I'm trying to scoop up as many of the roots as possible. Now, because there's only one in this, I don't even have to mess with um, his roots at all. I'm just going to go ahead and make a nice big hole for him and stick them down in there. Perfect, absolutely perfect. I wanted to show you the alyssum. And the reason why is because these alyssum are absolutely packed in here. Look at those, oh my gosh, the roots are terrible. So packed in there. But I still think they're gonna be okay because alyssum is a very hardy little plant in my region. I'm in zone 10 southern california now i'm going to make the holes right away before i even touch that alyssum because they're going to need to get down in there quick i can already feel the roots just cracking and breaking so i'm going to need to get them down in there really fast we'll just take one at a time okay here's one little guy way down in there okay I planted these like this on purpose because I know that alyssum is pretty tough. If it can grow out on my hill, it can grow anywhere. Need a little extra dirt for that one. Try to get them in the middle if you can and standing up. I'll go ahead in a minute and finish these ones. But I did want to show you the basil because these are a little tricky. And it's the same way as doing the thyme. We'll start over here. Let me see if I can get that little bit of angle for you guys. Here we go. We're going to start over here. I just want to get these cells ready. And you see back here, there's a cell just stuffed with basil. Oh, and it's all dried out, darn it. Give him a little bit of water. I just dipped him down inside the water because it's a little too dry. All right, you see all these little guys? Now, with basil, you can leave them in clumps. I don't know if you've ever... Um, purchase basil at the store, you know, at the grocery store. If you'll notice, if you look down in there, there's not one basil plant. There's several basil plants. So with the basil, you can leave two or three together and they'll be perfectly okay. Actually grow you a better plant probably. I'm going to leave two and stick it right down in there. 
all ready to go. So when this, when I do it this technique this way, these roots are not being exposed to the air very much, and that's exactly what we want. We want to keep them cool and wet. So that one has three. And this one also has three. Now that we have these beautiful little seedlings all planted up, they are going to need a drink and some food. I'm using a mix that is actually half strength water soluble plant food. So instead of doing the full strength, I have the amount of plant food that I would put into the water. I will be watering them like this every other time I water them. I will give them half strength water soluble plant food. I am very excited about these calendulas. Now I'm going to put them all out today because they're so big and luckily these are small little cells. Let's take a look at this root system. Oh boy they're ready to get out of there. Down in there. Very nice. That one looks like it's a little lanky, so I wonder if I could just put it down in there a little deeper. I'll try that. There's two here. I need to separate them. These calendulas get pretty big. It's likely I shouldn't have let them go this far, but it's been raining. I haven't been out in the garden. We'll do our best. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to sink this one a little deeper. He's, um, he's just up there too high. There we go. That's much better. These calendula look great. I'm going to give them some water. I'm going to hold them up a little bit when I'm watering them for the first time because they might flop over. I do have them down in there pretty good, but when those roots um, take hold, there's no stopping these guys. About two weeks ago, I planted what I call big seeds, and that's like your pumpkin seed, your sunflower seeds, nasturtium seeds are pretty big. Um, this is what the sunflowers look like now. They're doing great. I purposely put them in this really tall container because sunflower seeds like to send their roots deep. And that's how they can get five, six, seven foot tall. But I have some spaghetti squash here. And let me just show you an application that's super easy to transplant these because it's just not time for me to take them out to the hill and put them in the ground. In this one cell, I ended up with four spaghetti squash. Now, the reason why this is so exciting for me is because we harvested these from some spaghetti squash that we'd grown last year. So we didn't even have to buy these seeds. We just harvested them, we dried them really good, we washed them first, and then we put them in a pack until it was time to plant them about a couple weeks ago. Look at the difference. The seeds we, the seedlings we were working with before, um, they had been growing for about five weeks. These have only been going for about two weeks. And look at, they just come out like monsters. I'm going to dump them out so you can see what the roots look like. Oh boy. It's time. Now the roots are looking perfect for transplanting because they're not all tangled up yet. So I can go ahead and separate these. Oh, it's perfect. Separate these just as easy as pie. Look at how those roots are just starting to come apart. I love it. Now I'm going to set them down in some nice cool soil until I start working with them, but let's try this one. It's just wonderful when you don't let them go too long and you don't lose any of their roots. Let me count how many I have. So that was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Good grief. There's a million of them. Um, there's about 25. 
I don't have 25 um, nursery cans to put them in. So I'm going to use a solo cup. Solo cups work great. I took my garden snips and I just smashed some holes in the bottom. I'm going to fill it up with soil. These guys are so big and they're so easy to handle that I don't even need to use my knife to make a hole. I'm just going to pot this like I would any other little plant. And what I love about this, this guy is going to have room to grow and he's not going to be fighting with anybody. When I planted these big seeds in a video that I did a couple of weeks ago, it's seed starting part two. I put some um, time release fertilizer down into the soil because I know these guys grow quick and they need food. So I don't need to add any more because I already know there's some down in there. But what I am going to do, just like with the other seedlings, I'm going to be watering them with half water and half water soluble fertilizer. So it's just basically half strength plant food. And that way it'll give them enough to just keep going. I don't want to have linky, long, straggly plants. I want to have hardy, beefy, strong plants. And the way that you do that is you give them plenty to eat, plant them in the right soil, and make sure they stay the consistency of moisture that they like. Seedlings like to be moist, not damp, not super wet, just moist. This is perfect. But I'm going to plant all of these into these solo cups. I'm going to give them a drink of water. And one thing about solo cups I want to show you guys, this is just wonderful. You don't have to put a tag in here because you can write right on the solo cup. I'm going to take you over and show you where I put these because this progression is absolutely important. I cannot let these little baby seeds dry out because if they do, they'll just die instantly. So I'm going to put them in a little tabletop greenhouse that I made. It's super easy. I didn't have to buy anything and it's just ready to go all the time. I've been using it this whole season and it's doing a wonderful job. These guys have been outside and they don't need to go into the little greenhouse, but I do need to make sure I keep them damp. I'll be checking them several times a day and making sure that this soil doesn't dry out or that they get too much sunshine. We have to be careful with them for about two weeks and then they'll be super hardy and they can take what the weather gives them. This is my little tabletop greenhouse that all I did was, this is my patio table that I always have out here and I put a big piece of plastic around it. As you can see, I left places on the bottom where I could let airflow come in if I needed to. But this is where these spaghetti squash are gonna live right on top of here. They're gonna get morning sun and a little bit of afternoon, but mostly, you know, afternoon and late afternoon shade. So that'll be perfect for them. Now, over here, I have our little delicate babies that we just transplanted and they just look amazing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push them underneath the table here. I'm going to be out here for a couple of hours transplanting all my beautiful little plants. I'm so excited about the germination rate. It was great. I have so many new plants and I do share my plants with friends and family, they actually kind of wait to see what I'm going to be growing that year. A great thing about growing seeds and germinating yourself is that you can have all different types of plants. You don't have to rely on a nursery or a home improvement store. You can have all different types of plants. For instance, those petunias I showed you earlier, that is a color that you can only grow from seed. I've never seen it in a nursery. So when people come into my garden, they see a lot of different things that they've never seen before. I really hope you found something in this video that is gonna help you grow abundant plants in your garden. I mean, I just have more plants than I know what to do with, but I like that. So if you guys are interested in learning about gardening and gardening in a suburban garden, go ahead and subscribe because we have so many wonderful things coming up. I can't wait to share all of the little tips and all the little applications that I've learned over a lot, a lot of years of gardening, and I love to share them with you. There's always so much we can talk about in the garden. Thanks for stopping by, you guys. I'll see you next time.